find me behind the cross, God, so much so that your people would see and hear none of me but all of thee. I desire that you get the glory. I desire that you get the honor. I pray that no flesh is glorified, but people will leave here, God, letting their light so shine among men that they'll see their light, but give you all glory and all honor. Now, God, I pray against every distraction, every, every wondering thought. And lastly, I pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to bring back to remembrance every word, every scripture, every point, every illustration. Do it for us, oh God. In Jesus' name, and the church said amen. Put those hands together. Help me worship the Lord right before the word. Come on, help me worship him. Help me worship the Lord in this house. My hallelujah. My hallelujah Come on, worship you. us. Come on, let me hear you. My hallelujah 100% participation. Open your mouth. Come on and help me all over the building. Your Lord, my, my hallelujah. hallelujah Love you, girl. You, Come on, my hallelujah my belongs hallelujah to you, belongs Lord. And here's the reason why. Come on in the balcony, help me. Come on, way up top. Help me in the back. Come on in the corner. Big John, help me. Help me, help me. Come on, all the glory. Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. We're in a series. Uh, this is the fourth sermon in this series. We're at the halfway part, halfway point, the halfway point. And as you're finding Matthew um, chapter uh, number 5 and looking um, particularly at, at verse 6, I'll read all six verses. Uh, let me great thank God for all of our pastors, uh, our ministers, staff ministers, uh, my dear friend, Pastor um, Porter, officers of our church. Um, these uh, phenomenal uh, musicians, uh, mighty men's ministry choir, uh, these ushers have been serving all day long, and greeters, nurses, all of you, uh, Antioch North and South that's in the building, we're grateful to God for, um, for you. The word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 5, uh, beginning uh, in verse 1 through 6, uh, this is how uh, my Bible read, and seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And our preaching scripture, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. While you're standing, turn to your neighbor, look him or her in the eye and say, neighbor, I got to control what I crave. I won't talk about 
Uh huh. Tell them again, neighbor. Get that thing under control. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta, con gotta control. You gotta control. Get it under control. Ushers, you may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, we are blessed once again to look at this tremendous teaching of Jesus Christ. These scriptures between Matthew chapter 1 throughout the balance of chapter number 7 that's better known to us as the Sermon on the Mountaintop. And as we shine our sermonic spotlight on verse number 6, we have finally reached uh, the beatitude that William Barclay, that noted theologian and biblical commentator, has described and defined as the most difficult of the Beatitudes. If, if you've been following along with me for the last few weeks, uh, you know that at this time in the text, Jesus has already um, sat his disciples down and he has already stressed to them the importance, number one, of having um, poverty in, in spirit. Uh, he shared with them in verse 3, um, blessed are the poor in, 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 in spirit. Um, he's already talked to them about um, having uh, or being in pieces when they, when they sin. Uh, in verse 4, he said, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Last week, he uh, talked to them about having their power uh, under subjection. Last week, he talked to them about blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. But in this week, in verse number six, Jesus uh, shifts the emphasis. Uh, the emphasis in verse number six is no longer on self, uh, but the emphasis in verse six is now on the sovereign. Jesus, he redirects their focus, and the focus is no longer on self. But in verse 6, the focus is on the sovereign. And because Jesus makes this shift, it's understandable that Barclay would label this fourth beatitude the most difficult. Because this fourth beatitude, brothers and sisters, it forces the disciple to have discipline with their desires. This beatitude, this fourth beatitude is such a challenge to us because this fourth beatitude it forces the believer to harness what they hunger for it forces the believer to try to curb what they crave it forces the believer to put a leash on the things that they long for and, and by my own admission, uh, most times that's easier said than done. It, it's, 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 it's hard to harness our hunger. Amen, lights. It, it's, it's hard to put a leash on lust. It's, it's, it's hard to try to curb our appetite for the things we're craving. And the truth be told is because some of us got some strong desires. Lean over to your neighbor and say, he ain't lying now. Some of us, we got some strong desires. We, we desire uh, some stuff. Please don't look at your neighbor now, but if you knew everything your neighbor desired, you wouldn't be sitting beside them next week. Don't look. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. B because the truth of the matter is we have some strong, we have some strong desires. I, I want to spend a little time this morning, afternoon, rather, talking about desire because there's a misnomer. There's a misnomer. That there's a misnomer that having desire is a bad thing. It's a misnomer that having a strong desire uh, is a sinful or a wicked or a bad thing to have. And I want you to know before I go any further that uh, having a strong desire is a good thing. Having desire is a wonderful thing. In fact, uh, if, if it wasn't for desire, we would perish. It is the strong desire for food that stimulates our appetite, that makes us feed ourselves, that gives our body nourishment. It is the desire for thirst that keeps our body from becoming dehydrated, that forces us to seek out liquids that would do that for our bodies. It is the desire for rest uh, that makes us pause from our busy schedule, sit down somewhere, and allow us to rest and recover from the strain, the stress, and the struggle of life. 
It is our desire for advancement that will make us go back to school and pursue graduate and postgraduate de uh, degrees. Are y'all with me today? It, it, it is our desire for companionship that will make us be open for love and make ourselves vulnerable to trust somebody even after our heart has been broken. Y'all ain't got it yet. So, it, so desire is a good thing. And so the issue is not having a strong desire. The issue was having the wrong desire. I, I've discovered that we don't get in trouble because of our craving. We get in trouble because we're craving the wrong stuff. Are y'all going to talk to me today? We don't get in trouble because we have a desire. We get in trouble because we are desiring the wrong stuff. We don't get in trouble because we have a hunger. We get in trouble because we are hungering for the wrong stuff. Therefore, as a child of God, stay with me, it's going to get better. As a child of God, we have to learn how to control our cravings because if you're not careful, we will fall prey to what I call carnal cravings. Somebody shout back and shout carnal cravings. A, a carnal craving, watch this, a carnal craving, they'll put it on the screen. A carnal craving is when we desire something that's outside the will of God for our life. I'll say it again. A carnal craving is a desire, it's a longing, it's a want for something that's, uh, that's, that, that's not earmarked for us. It, it's a longing or a desire for something uh, that God has determined it, it's not for is not for us. I, I, I was very meticulous about how I worded that definition, Duke, because you need to understand um, that a carnal craving is not sinful in and of itself. But what makes the car you know, craving carnal is when we want something that God has not earmarked for your life. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking to me. That when we want something that God uh, doesn't want us to have, that, that's called a carnal craving. And when you read the Bible, you'll discover that the Bible is replete uh, with a plethora of people that were doing phenomenal things in life, but all of a sudden had a carnal craving, and that craving got them caught up. Someone say, Pastor Jackson, what are some carnal cravings. I'm glad you asked. When you crave for rulership, that's a carnal craving. When you crave, when you have a hunger and a desire um, to be in charge, when you crave power, when you crave um, position, y'all ain't talking to me, when you crave wanting to be the head, when you crave wa wanting to be uh, in a position of significance so bad that you're willing to do anything and, and do anything to anybody, when you crave rulership so bad that you're willing to act like a crab in a barrel and pull your sister or brother down so you can get ahead, that's a carnal craving. In fact, that's what did Lucifer in. Uh, in your Bible, if you were to read Isaiah chapter uh, number 14, uh, verses 12 through 14, you would discover that the Bible says of Lucifer or Satan, same person, that he had a desire and his desire was to ascend uh, uh, up into heaven and, and, and build a throne that was above the throne of God. God, God are y'all still here? God had to kick Lucifer out of heaven because uh, he had a desire to be above uh, God, look this way. Whenever uh, you crave an appointment without carrying an anointment, uh, you're running the risk of having a carnal. Uh, cra have I got any help in this house? When you are craving power, when you are craving uh, position, when you are craving uh, rulership so bad, be careful because that can give birth to a carnal uh, craving, but not only when we crave uh, rulership, but secondly, when you crave uh, recognition, somebody shout recognition. Uh, when you want the spotlight, when you want people to pat you on the back, when you want people to esteem you highly, when you rob God of recognition, stay with me as I teach this morning, you're running the risk of having a carnal 
craving. That's what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, in your Bible, write this scripture down. In Daniel chapter 4, uh, around verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, as I paraphrase, Daniel um, chapter 4, verse 30, rather, the Bible says that Daniel uh, or Nebuchadnezzar was walking on top of the walls of Babylon. Stay with me. And as he was walking on the walls of Babylon, verse 30 uh, of Daniel chapter 4, uh, Daniel opened up his mouth. And, and Daniel, as I paraphrase, opened his mouth and said, Oh, great Babylon that I, I built by my might. Uh, I, I built for my glory and my honor. And no, nowhere uh, did, did, did he ever claim that God blessed him. No, nowhere in his words did he give God credit and glory for how God had given him the strength. And because he was seeking recognition, because he was robbing God of glory and honor, the Bible says in verse 31 that while the word was still in his mouth, God struck him down because God is not going to sit back and let you claim glory and honor and take it from him. Somebody in the building right now need to recognize that you're running the risk of, of, of having a carnal craving. Uh, when you rob God of glory, when you act like you pulled your own self up by the bootstraps, when you act like you opened the door, when you act like you made the way, when you act like you leveled the mountain, y'all ain't talking to me, when you carry yourself like it was because of, of your grace and your mercy that you had what you are. Somebody today need to recognize if it had not been for the Lord, that was on your side. The door wouldn't have been opened. The mountain would not have been leveled. The valley would not have been, I got the wrong crowd. Somebody need to recognize that, that it was not you, but it was because the Lord was on your side. Are y'all hearing me today? And whenever, whenever, stay with me, whenever you run the risk, whenever you get to the point that you are craving recognition, you're running the risk of having a carnal craving. Can I give you one more? Carnal cravings are when you long or hunger for rulership, when you long and hunger for recognition. Thirdly, when you long and hunger for riches. Oh, we're going to kill a devil in here. Somebody today, uh, you're hungering and longing for, craving for riches. It, it, it's interesting to all of God how uh, we'll come to church and we'll pray uh, that God will give us a career. We'll come to church and pray that God would give us job opportunity. And God opens that door for you to get that job, to have that career. Then you want to work all the hours that you can, taking you away, amen, from the God that gave you the job in the first place place. Uh, it, it, it's a carnal craving uh, uh, to have a, a desire for riches without righteousness. I got the wrong crowd. Jesus tells a parable in Luke chapter 12. And in Luke 12, Jesus tells this parable of a rich farmer. Can I teach this morning? This rich farmer, Renee, that God had blessed to have a, a bumper crop. Uh, the Bible says in Luke 12, verse, stay with me, uh, verse 16, that the Lord blessed him so much so that that year he had plenty. Can the church shout plenty? Well, this rascal decided in verse 17 that instead of, 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 of blessing another believer, uh, he decided I'd just build a bigger barn. Y'all ain't talking to me. I got to come get you. He, he, he decided that I got so much stuff instead of sowing it into somebody else. What I'll do is uh, I'll just build a bigger facility to house my stuff. Not one time that it crosses mind that I got so many shoes uh, I can give it to somebody else. Not one time did it cross his mind that I got so many clothes that I can bless somebody else. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Not, not one time did it cross his mind that I got so much stuff. There's somebody that's less fortunate than I am. Not one time did it cross his mind that God has blessed me with bounty. I can give out of my bounty something to bless. Can I get a witness in this house? You run the risk of having a carnal craving when God has blessed you so much you can't reach into your abundance and so I got the wrong crowd uh, into somebody else a congregation uh, of our size everybody should have their needs met congregation our size uh, nobody should be hungry nobody should need clothes uh, you run the risk of having a carnal craving uh, when you have so much in excess you gotta put clothes in your little children's room you got so much stuff you gotta uh, uh, build a bigger uh, wing on the house the devil is a liar. You run the risk. 
can't say amen, just holler ouch. Run the risk of having a carnal, a carnal, a carnal craving. And so Jesus, let me get to my text. You look like you're tired of me. Jesus, uh, he sits his disciples down and uh, he opens his mouth and he says to them in, in so many words, I want you to control what you crave. And tucked away in verse number six, keep your Bibles open, tucked away in verse number six are three powerful principles that we need to apply. I mean, if we're going to control the things that we crave. First thing that we discover in verse 6, that if I'm going to control uh, this monster called my desire, help me preach somebody, the first thing I got to do is I have to have a holy hunger. Woo-wee. Stop your neighbor from writing and say, neighbor, you got a hunger for holiness. I ain't going to have no amens in this section of the sermon. You got you to gotta hunger. You have to hunger for holiness. Jesus, watch this, sits his disciples down. Stay with me. And Jesus tells his disciples in so many words, I don't want you um, to make the same mistake Lucifer made by hungering for rulership. Don't make the same mistake that Nebuchadnezzar made by hungering for recognition. Don't make the same mistake that the rich farmer made by hungering for riches. I want your hunger your appetite. I want what you long for to be a righteousness. Somebody loudly shout righteousness. Well, look this way. The relevant question is this. What is righteousness? I, 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 I just believe that, that you can't become it if you don't know what it is. Y'all ain't talking to me. How, how, how in the world um, can the, the Lord expect me um, to uh, operate uh, in righteousness uh, uh, if I don't know what righteousness is. And I've discovered, I've discovered by looking at our culture, I've discovered by, um, by looking in, uh, at, at our church and churches uh, around the country that so many people really don't know what righteousness really is. So before I tell you what it is, can I tell you what it ain't? Y'all don't like me today. Can, can I tell you? Can I tell you what? It, can I tell you what it's not before I tell you uh, what it is? Some some people think um, that righteous uh, is not listening to secular music. Some people think um, that righteousness uh, is listening to Luther Barnes and not Luther Vandross. Some people think um, that righteousness uh, is listening to Shirley Caesar and not Shirley Murdoch. Some people think that righteousness is listening. Y'all ain't hearing me to the Williams brothers uh, and not the Isley brothers. Some people think that righteousness. Uh, is listening to Kirk Franklin and not Kirk Whalem. Some people think that righteousness uh, is listening to Kim Burrell and not look Kim. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah, that's for y'all young folks. So, some people think that righteousness uh, uh, deals with a certain kind of, of musical genre. Some people think um, that righteousness is wearing long white dresses with a little white cloth on your head. Some people think that righteousness is uh, walking around with no jewelry or no makeup. Some people think that righteousness is women not wearing pants. Some people think that right, I got the wrong crowd. Some people think that righteousness uh, is joining a certain denomination. Some people think that righteousness is not having a drink of alcohol or liquor. Some people think that righteousness uh, is not going to a club or a party. I'll keep going till I get to you. Some people think that righteousness is living a monastic kind of lifestyle only surrounded uh, by believers in the faith. Help me, somebody. Some people think that righteousness is uh, walking around uh, quoting scripture all the time. Some people think that righteousness is uh, walking around with a cross around your neck and a Bible in your hand uh, but guess what none of those things uh, are righteousness what is righteousness uh, Arthur Pink, Arthur Pink, write that name down. Arthur Pink, uh, who's one of my favorite biblical writers. Uh, Arthur Pink gives a phenomenal definition to me of what righteousness is. Arthur Pink said, uh, righteousness is uh, living or being in right standing with God and living in right standing with one another. I'll try it again. Righteousness is uh, being in right standing with God and living in right standing with one another. Don't miss 
notice that righteousness is both horizontal and vertical. Help me, somebody. Righteousness is a vertical and horizontal. I'll try this side. Righteousness is a vertical and I'll try this side. Righteousness is a vertical and horizontal. You can't have one without the other. There are some people that want to be in the right standing with man, but not in good standing with God. Most folk want to be in good standing with God and not in good standing with one another. You can't claim that you have righteousness and you love God, but don't talk to your neighbor. I, I, I got the wrong crowd. I got the wrong crowd. All right, baby, if you're going to operate in righteousness, you got to have, watch this, right standing with God and right standing with one another. How can you love God whom you have never seen and you can't stand your brother who you see every day? And we're going to kill a devil in this house. I see it all the time. We come to church prepared to praise God. We step over people, walk by people, look up and down at people who may not wear the clothes you're wearing may not drive the devil is a liar God wants us to be righteous someone wants a neighbor be righteous how much time do I have? Be righteous, be righteous, be righteous. Please, please understand um, that when, when Jesus, uh, as recorded by Matthew, when he talks about righteousness, uh, he's not using righteousness uh, in the same term that Paul uses righteousness. Um, Paul, you Bible readers know in the epistle, Paul talks about righteousness. Are y'all hearing me? But the righteousness that Paul talks about is imputed righteousness. Are y'all hearing me? For instance, when Paul talked about how Abraham trusted God and because he trusted God, God counted him as righteous. Are y'all hearing me? Uh, that's not the righteousness that, 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 that Matthew uh, is recording Jesus talking about. Uh, we're not talking about the kind of righteousness that leads to justification. Uh, we're talking about the righteousness that leads to sanctification, the kind of righteousness uh, that will make you want to love a God and love one another. Jesus said, blessed is the man who has a hunger for righteousness. Am I talking to somebody in here who got a hunger to do the right thing? Come on. It's one thing to miss the mark, but it's another thing to not even aim for the mark. I'm not talking about reaching perfection. I'm talking about aiming for perfection. Am I talking to somebody here who has a desire to want to do right? Um, 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 watch this. Um, uh, it, it's interesting. It's interesting that, um, that, that, that people in church uh, will be first. Let me preach it like I feel it. People in church will be the first to quote the scripture. And the scripture says, uh, ain't none righteous except one. Yeah, we quote that scripture to justify our wicked, sinful behavior. To, to justify why we act the way we act. And how we talk, the way we talk, and the way we live, the way we live, we, we, we'll canvas our conduct under the auspices of the scripture that says, well, there ain't none righteous. Can I tell y'all what that means? It means that there's only one person who has attained righteousness. But everybody else ought to be aiming. Just because you ain't attained it don't mean you ain't trying to hit it. Can you turn to three people and say, I'm aiming at it, I'm aiming at it. Come on, come on, I'm aiming at it. Well, boo, if you're aiming at it, face the target. If you're trying to hit it, at least look at the target. If you're trying to hit the bullseye, at least face the bull. You can't even aim it if you ain't looking at it. Y'all don't like me today. Let me hurry up then. Jesus says, watch it. I'm in verse 6. If you're going to control what we crave, we got to have a holy hunger. Tap somebody's neighbor, a holy hunger. But not only must we have a holy hunger, if we're going to control this monster called desire, that sounds like a movie title, monster called desire. We got to have a habitual hunger. Somebody shout habitual hunger. Oh, you know what habitual means. Yeah. You lie all the time. 
You are a. Told you you knew. You steal all the time. You are a. You miss church all the time. Jesus says, watch this, that we have to have a habitual hunger. It's there in verse 6. It's in verse 6. Write this down. Take notes. It's in there in verse 6 because um, the two words, watch this, hunger and thirst, are in what's called the present active nominative tense. And all that means, all, all that simply means is that there's an I-N-G behind those words. That's all it means. The present active nominative tense means that there is an ing behind the word hunger and thirst look this way so when you read verse 6 in the original language this is how verse 6 read in the Greek language oh the blessedness of those who are hungering and thirsting for all of righteousness you don't know when to shout I'll try it again Verse 6 in the Greek reads like this. Oh, the blessedness of the one who are hungering and thirsting for the fullness of righteousness. That suggests that the hunger ought not just be Sunday morning between 11 and 1. I got the wrong crowd, but the hunger ought to be in every day hunger. Can, can I tell y'all uh, the, the, the interesting thing about appetite, all of us in the building right now, we can go home and we can uh, eat uh, whatever we're going to eat. Amen. P pre fast. Yeah. Go home and we can eat whatever we want to eat. Uh, but in a couple hours later uh, when our food digests, y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, what's going to happen? We're going to be hungry all over again. We can leave church right now, go to a buffet, uh, 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 eat and get full and by 8 o'clock tonight, come on, we're going to be opening the refrigerator, trying to get another snack. Why? Because what appetite does is, uh, even though appetite is fully satisfied, uh, appetite always comes up. Uh, I got the wrong crowd. Uh, what the text is teaching us is, uh, the blessed person is the one uh, who's always hungering after God. Uh, who's always, I got the wrong crowd. Uh, can I talk to somebody in this house who's made up in your mind uh, that God has been so good to you uh, that you're going to stay hungry? Uh, is there a hungry person in the house? Uh, is there somebody that walked in church today with a hungry mindset that told the Lord, Lord, feed me until. <laughs> um, um, uh, let, let, let me slow down and see if I can help you uh, because some of you look a little confused. Uh, every parent uh, in the building, um, um, you know, you know when your child or children are really hungry. Yeah, you, you know, you, you know, you know, you know. I, it's been a minute for some of y'all, but you know. When your grandkids, when your, child, when your children, when, 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 they're, when they're really hungry, you, you know they're hungry. One of the ways you know they're really hungry uh, is because they can't wait to eat. I mean, they, they, they can't, I'm going so they can't, they can't wait um, to eat. So, so, as soon as they sit down, they're, they're, they're ready. As soon as, as they sit down, they're, sometimes they start eating even before they sit down because they're ready um, to eat. Another sign that you know they're hungry is that they eat everything you know, that, that on, 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 on the plate. Watch this. They, they ain't picky. They, they ain't finicky. Help me, somebody. You, you know that your child really ain't hungry when they say, what's for dinner? And you tell them, well, I don't want that. Well, you, you ain't really hungry. Help, you, you see, I, I came from country parents. Uh, not country, but country parents. And, and they didn't make different meals for different children. We got six different kids. Sometimes all six of us wanted something different, uh, but they weren't trying to cater to all six people. Listen, listen, this is what's on the menu, and when you get hungry, you'll eat what's on the I got the wrong crowd, because when you're really hungry, you don't care uh, on what's on the menu. You come coming to get you, coming to get you. Some of y'all in the building, uh, uh, you don't come really hungry, because you want to find out what chef is preparing the meal.
real because you, you don't want to eat from certain people, but the devil is a liar. When you are really hungry, you don't care who prepared the meal as long as it's palatable. Uh, you can't wait. I got the wrong cross. Some of y'all, you're really not hungry because when you're really hungry, you can't wait to eat. I got the wrong crowd. Uh, when you are hungry, you ain't trying to talk to everybody. When you are hungry, you're trying to get your grub on. Uh, and some of y'all in the building, you ain't coming here hungry because you're worried about who's sitting beside who. You're worried about what somebody so-and-so got on. If you can tell me what somebody was wearing every Sunday, it's because uh, you are spectator and I'm a participator. But when you are hungry for God, every time you come to church, you don't care if the choir sing, you don't care if Pastor Jackson preach, you came to get your grub on. Is there a hunger in this house? Tell somebody I walked in hungry! Walked in with a starving spirit. Could, could, couldn't wait to come to this biblical buffet. Could, 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 I couldn't wait to get in this house. I, 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 I've been hungry. I've been jonesing for a word, jonesing for something. I got the wrong crowd. Jonesing for a meal, jonesing, jonesing for a, a, a full course meal. So the devil is a liar. You can't tell me I can't shout. You can't tell me I can't run. You can't tell me I can't make noise. You can't tell me I can't get up and act crazy for God. You can't tell me I can't open my mouth and holler like I'm crazy because uh, you don't know how long I've been waiting for this meal. You don't know how long I've been waiting for an opportunity to eat. And because I came into the kitchen of God, uh, I'm going to sit down and eat at the welcome table until I get full. You, you got to have a habitual hunger. Touch three people and say a habitual hunger. Because, let me slow down, because our hunger has to be habitual. Peter 1 Peter 2 2. P Peter says, write that down. 1 Peter 2 2. Peter says, we have to be like newborn babes. Come on, y'all. Desiring the milk of the Word of God. Your young lady over here got a little baby in her hand. She'll tell you, that baby, I'm sure, always hungry. Hey, man, she, she looks hungry right now. Baby, always. Baby, always. 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 Hungry, oh, always, always, always hungry. I, I, I have pet uh, in, in my house. I, I'm, a, I'm a pet owner, but I have pet fish. Why y'all laughing? I don't laugh at your dog. You dress your little dog up. I don't laugh at y'all. Y'all be kissing the dog in the mouth and laugh. your nasty self sleeping in the bed with your dog. I, I ain't judging you. All in the bed with your dog. Riding around the car with your dog. Y'all go shopping together. I don't, I don't judge y'all. I got, I got, I have pet fish. Pet fish. My fish are always hungry. There's never a time when I put food in my aquarium that my fish don't eat because my fish are always hungry. God want us to be like that, to always be hungry. I, I, I know you're hungry on Sunday morning, but can you be hungry when, the, when nobody's watching you? I, I know you're hungry. I know you're hungry. On Sunday morning, but but what about Saturday night? What what you hungering for then? Let me hurry. J Jesus says, if you're gonna control control your craving, I wish you writing this down. Number one, you have to have a holy hunger. Shout back with me. Shout holy hunger. Secondly, you gotta have a habitual hunger. Shout habitual hunger. But then you gotta have what I call a healthy hunger. Write that down. A healthy. Hunger. Look at the text, and I'm done. Sherelle, the text says, uh, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Here it is. For they shall be filled. 
Lord, I feel like preaching today. They shall be filled. Try this side. They shall be filled. The, the emphasis is on they. That, that, that word they. Don't miss it. That, the word they. Mike, sit down. You're making me nervous. That word they. Uh, um, uh, it, it's emphatic. It, it's, it's denoting a distinction. The, the they is suggesting, watch this, that, that what's coming to those who are hungering and thirsting is not coming to everybody else. You missed it. You, the, the, the text says, watch this, blessed are those uh, that, that are hungering and, and thirsting for righteousness because uh, they are going to get something that everybody else, y'all don't gather yet, is it, going to get. Uh, God is going to treat the they different from them. And, and, and you got to make up your mind what crowd you're going to be in. Are you going to be in the they crowd or the them crowd? You, you, you can't be like them expecting to get what they I got the wrong crowd. Uh, if you want what they are going to get, you got to come from among them because they ain't getting what them are getting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, you, you added uh, three more minutes to the sermon because every time y'all look confused, you know what you do. You add three minutes to the sermon. I got to explain it to you. Uh, let me see if I can help you. Some of y'all are not shouting because uh, you don't know what favor is. <laughs> favor is when God don't treat them like he treat they. <laughs> I got the wrong cry. F f favor uh, is when God um, treats certain people different than other people. And when you look at this text, uh, it clearly says, uh, and they are getting something that everybody else ain't get. I got the wrong crowd. Uh, and somebody in the building, you know uh, that God has treated you differently all your life. Uh, that's why you're driving what you're driving, living where you're living. Uh, because you've had this thing called favor on your life all your life. Help me, somebody. Uh, you, the reason why you shout the way you shout is because your testimony is uh, God has never treated you like he's treated everybody else. Uh, your testimony is uh, even when you didn't dot the I, even when you didn't cross the T, God didn't let happen to the other people uh, what happened to you. Help me somebody. Other people went down, but God brought you over. Other people gave out, but God lets you get in. Help me somebody. You want to give God a crazy praise because God has let you walk in favor. He's let you drive in favor. He's let you live in favor. Can you give somebody high five and tell a neighbor you just high five the favored hand. You just high five somebody that God has been leaning toward all of his life. I should have been dead. I should have been in my grave. I should have thrown up the white flag thrown in the towel. But because of his goodness and mercy, we are not consumed. Sit down. The, the, the text says, and they, 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 they have something coming to them that everybody else don't have coming to them. Well, somebody hollered, well, Pastor Jackson, what do they have coming? It's in text. They shall be filled. Not them. I used to be slow too, so I'm very patient when people don't get it on the first couple of times. The feeling is not coming to them. It's coming to do me a favor. We're going to do a, a pew check. Asking his neighbor, you them or they? Just ask him, you one of them? I hope you ain't one of them. Just tell me. I hope you ain't one of them. I just, come on. I can't believe you're one of them. Tell me, you one of them? Don't, don't sit beside me next week if you want to. You may be cursing my role. You, you may be hindering my blessing if you one of them. You, you, may be, you may be the cause why favor is leaving my house if you one of them. You, you may be the cause why I'm still broke. I, please, please, please take your curse self to another. If you one of them, please, you got my permission to sit on another road next week. Almost done. I'm, I'm almost done. 
I wouldn't be a Baptist preacher if I didn't say I'm almost done five times. They shall be filled. Somebody shout filled. I'm, that, that word filled in, in the Greek, they're going to put it on the screen. That word filled, it means this. It, it means to be completely satisfied. Completely satisfied. It, it speaks of being completely satisfied. It speaks of being full. It speaks of being fat. so full that you're almost uncomfortably full. I, I, don't, I don't want you to admit this. J just wink at me if I'm talking to you. Have you ever eaten so much? Have you just just wink at me. Don't, don't raise your hand. I, I, mean, you, you, I mean, you ate so much. You, 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 your girdle tight. I mean, just wink. Don't wait. Just, just, just wait. I, I mean, you just. I mean, you're so full. I mean, you, you, you're so full. You, you want to just. Just. Just uncomfortable. Y'all ain't feeling me. You just. You, you know, ate too. I know you know. You know, ate too much. You, you just. Un uncomfortable. Watch this. They, they shall be filled. But, but filled is in what's called the passive voice. And, and, and whenever a word, I'm almost done. Whenever a word, Lori, is in the passive voice, it, it, it means that the subject is the recipient of the action. It, it, it means, Munchie, that, that, that you can't feel yourself that there's somebody else has to do the feeling. I'm going to lose some of y'all in here, but, but when I was a kid growing up um, in, in, in Georgia, um, we had what was called a fattening pen. Fattening pen. Anybody here from the country? Fattening pen? And fattening pen? Okay, all two of y'all. Fat, fattening pen. Fattening pen. Had a fattening pen, and, and and what a fattening pen was, was this for you city folk? Uh, it, it it's a little designated space that my grandfather would put the pig or the hog that we were going to eat at the end of the summer. And this hog, this pig, didn't eat what everybody else ate. Hurry up, brother! It's gonna get better. <laughs> he, he didn't eat what everybody else. Hey, the, the other the other hogs, the other pen, pigs had ate slop, but 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 the, the, the pig in the fattening pen ate, ate corn, ate oats and grain, ate, ate stuff. Watch this that the other hogs didn't eat because Granddaddy was trying to fatten this one up. He he was trying to the bullet trying to fatten. The, the, the pig up because he had plans for it. <laughs> he, 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 had, he, he had something in mind. He, he, he was going to use this in, in a special way. And, and, and because he was going to use it, because he had plans for it, because he, he had an idea in mind for something special for this pig, he, he didn't want this pig, this hog to be emaciated. He didn't want this hog to be, you from Alabama, come on. He didn't want this pig to be skinny. He, he wanted this pig to be fattened up. Why? Because he had something planned for it. And so what he did was uh, he kept feeding. And even when the pig or the hog didn't want it, he kept putting more stuff on. I got the wrong crowd. He, even when the hog looked that he was already satisfied, he just kept raining down food and kept raining down oats, kept raining down um, corn in that pen because uh, he wanted that pig Every time the hog got hungry, he didn't want the hog to go looking for a blessing. He didn't want the hog to go looking for something else. He didn't want the hog looking at another pen, looking at another person. He wanted that hog to have everything that he needed. Why? Because he had plans for that pig. And he wanted that hog to be fattened up. Can I give you a word in this house? 
that word be filled mean that God has plans for somebody here. He wants to fatten you up. Now, I, I, I know, I know when you hear about somebody fattening you up, uh, you thinking about your ontological physique, you thinking about your physical shape. I'm not talking about fattening you up physically. Uh, I'm saying that God wants to fatten your bank account, that God uh, wants to fatten your influence, that God uh, wants to fatten, he wants to make your business larger. He wants to make your influence. I'm talking to somebody right now. God wants to fill your life up so much so uh, that every time you turn around, uh, blessings are all around you. E every time you look around, uh, you're walking into another blessing uh, because God has made you fatter. God has made you larger. God has made you bigger. How many in the building are familiar with the prayer of Jabez? Uh, that's all that Jabez was saying. Uh, when Jabez prayed, Lord, bless me indeed. Uh, enlarge my territory. All he was trying to say was, Lord, uh, put me in the fattening pen. All he was saying was, Lord, uh, fatten me up. Uh, and I'm talking to somebody here under the sound of my voice. Uh, God wants to make you larger. Uh, in fact, help me prophesy to somebody. Turn to your neighbor. Look him or her in the face and tell him, neighbor, I see you in the future. Uh, and you look larger. Uh, come on, say, neighbor, I see you uh, in the future. Uh, and you look bigger. Come on, talk to him. Tell him, neighbor, I've seen you in the future. Uh, and things look magnified. Uh, come on, talk to your neighbor. Tell him, neighbor, uh, I've seen you in the future. Uh, and your future looks bigger. In fact, it's so big, uh, it's going to be uncomfortable. In fact, you're so fat, you're going to be uncomfortably miserable. G God is going to bless you uh, that you got to have a bigger barn. God is going to bless you that your life is going to be bigger. Uh, your business will be bigger. Your influence uh, will be bigger. Your scope of range will be bigger. Contracts uh, will be bigger. Opportunity. I got the wrong crowd. Uh, opportunities uh, will be bigger. Uh, if I got, I'm, I'm talking to you. Give somebody high five uh, and tell them, neighbor, uh, get ready for an upgrade. Come on, talk to them. Uh, tell them, neighbor. Get ready for an increase. Get ready for a feeling. And when the Lord fills you up, you ain't going to have to go looking for no external thing because the feeling is on the inside. I got to get out of here. But in order to be filled, you got to control your craving. In order to be filled, you got to have a whole hunger. Is there a holy hunger in the house? Is there somebody that can tell God, Lord, I have a habitual hunger. Raise your hand if I'm talking to you. Is there somebody that can tell God, fill me up until I overflow. Somebody shout, overflow. 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 Grab your neighbor by the hand. Say, neighbor, I pray. Overflow in your hand. Squeeze that hand. Tell him, neighbor, overflow. 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 Let go of that hand. Take your hand over yourself and prophesy and declare. I speak overflow over my life. Overflow on my home. Overflow in my house. Overflow in my business. Overflow in my walk. Overflow in my talk. I ain't got no help in here. If you believe it, don't wait till it happens. If you believe it, don't wait until you get it. If you believe it, open up your mouth and declare it's mine. Declare it's mine. I can't hear you. Declare. It's mine. Yes. 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 When you see me walking around.
tonight is because I'm filled. When you see me talking right, it's because I've been filled. When you see me turn the other cheek, it's because I've been filled. When you see me love my neighbors, it's because I've been filled. You got to have a holy hunger. You got to have a holy hunger. Holy hunger. You have to hunger for what is right. Hunger to be have to have a right standing with God. I want to be right with God. But I also want to be right with my brothers and my sisters in Christ. I don't want to love God so much so that I love him, but I don't treat my neighbors right. Johnny, that's not righteousness. I want the Lord to look at me and see my holy hunger. But watch this. I want to have, Melvin, a habitual hunger. I don't want to just be hungry on Sunday morning, Sister Jones. Shally, I want to be hungry during the week. Monday morning, I want to wake up hungry. Holiness, 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 holiness. That's what you desire. 